This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first thousand people to sign up with the link in the description will get one month of free access to thousands of courses. Grand Theft Auto is a game that we were all introduced to at one point. Whether it was the first one to five, you likely got introduced to it before you could follow this label. There's something special about playing one of these games at your friend's house when you're a decade away from being allowed to, or the clerk at the game store listing the rating to the person buying the game for you. But over everything, what makes Grand Theft Auto so great was the freedom of being immersed in a totally different world. In its own way, it felt real. From Liberty City to Los Santos, the cities were so detailed that you actually felt like you were in it. A part of this reason was past the gameplay and rather the sound of the world around you. Upon finishing a mission, you may hop in your car and the radio will come on, describing the weather, talk going around on the station regarding a crime you just committed, followed by nothing but a G-thang on Radio Los Santos. What I'm getting to here is that Grand Theft Auto's radio is extremely important, not only into making up the game, but sparking initial music taste from kids to young adults across the world. I mean, look at the influence. Just Vice City and San Andreas sold 40 million copies worldwide. Back in 1997, Colin Anderson, who was a part of GTA's original sound department, pitched the idea of moving from MIDI sound to having actual car radios in the game for music. The idea really didn't pop off at all, and was quite low on the list of design priorities for the game. The brainstorming started in a room not much bigger than a broom closet, letting them create with little oversight. This meant that they had to use this room to prove themselves, in order to really push their idea. This room was where the idea of commercials like these... You're listening to Head Radio. Radio. The network show with Eddie Simmons. He's a champ. And radio DJs came to life. This would turn into seven stations, all done in-house by their team of musicians, which was quite impressive as it crossed a few genres. The small team out of a mop-sized room had an overwhelming success with fans, leading to much higher budgets in GTA 2. Grand Theft Auto 2 would go on to the next step of radios, to start using licensed music throughout the game. Anderson's vision was to put new local artists through the game's radio, but the co-founders steered the other way. Through this, it did find the development it needed to grow as a series. The radio commercials and DJs were especially trimmed up with even more outlandish segments like this. Get out of the car, bitch, I When anyone tries to jack my car, I pull out my Susie! Susie, home, office, and automobile protection guaranteed. By the time Grand Theft Auto 3 came out, Anderson was gone, but his core development of hosts, advertisements, and proving the power of radio would change these games for decades to come. The developers included 55 new songs within the game, with different licensed genres for the first time in the series. There was also a talk radio show included, and even a custom radio station. Even the cop cars had dispatcher radios. Talk shows and commercials were much more memorable from this game. They were done by Dan Hauser and Laszlo, and fit perfectly with the type of humor within the series. Grand Theft Auto gave us the opportunity of introducing us to artists both old and new, but Vice City is when things got real. Rockstar now had that big budget for licensing. When you enter your first car in Vice City, Michael Jackson's Billie Jean starts to play, helping us settle into this new 80s universe in no better way. The soundtrack boasted 103 predominantly licensed tracks, Ozzy, Iron Maiden, Rick James, and Toto, to name a few AAA artists. When we think about the 80s, for a lot of us, music is the first thing that comes to mind, and Rockstar really nailed it this time, capturing the era throughout the game. The soundtrack was so good that a 7-disc box set was released shortly after the game came out. In the book Why You Like It, The Science of Culture and Musical Taste, Nolan Gasser uses the term intraculture to describe how the culture around you influences your music taste. A lot of it has to do with where you grew up, and what kind of musical influences are in the air. But we participate in so many different subcultures of affinity, just based on what we like. Intracultures provide us with the access to music just because you're a part of a group, and that group means something to you. When we're immersed in these games, we are brought into the real West Coast, as Rockstar Games is widely known for their realism. San Andreas featured a variety of distinct gangs that our protagonist CJ would interact with. He himself was voiced by Young Melee, 
who was born in a very similar area of the game's setting. Grove Street District is loosely based on the Crips in South Central LA, and the main house that you start exists in Compton, specifically Spruce Street West. You can stroll on Santa Monica Beach, interact with Ryder who is based on the infamous Easy e and the rest of the gang, whose voice actors have lived a similar life. This all contributes to the strong character development and living a life based in South Central LA. We create a parasocial or one-way relationships with these characters, because even if it's at the slightest, they're created to pose relatability. Not to mention the peak age for music development starts at 14 and peaks at 24. Now take this entirely influenced world that you're submerged in and cue in Radio Los Santos, running a few hours a day as you play throughout the world. It's important to look at the limitations of music in the early to mid 2000s. Much of our musical influence came from film, the radio, or perhaps your family around you. Those were our socio-cultural influences. We didn't have the same apps pushing thousands of pieces of music a day. When brought into Grand Theft Auto, you had the opportunity to choose for yourself. Although there were a ton of stations, the radio dial was now ours. The game itself can also help associate the positive reinforcement of these songs, as they were being played during some of the great times in your life. As we moved on, GTA 4 had some great features like Kanye, Gangstar, Ghostface, Busta Rhymes, but it just didn't hold the same significant musical impact as previous games. But looking back on the game, we were no longer in a robust, colorful 80s Vice City. The environment was meant to be dull, gloomy, and resemble the dark pursuit of the American dream. Greed, murder, and lust just to be unfulfilled once Nico finally achieves this dream. But I would have to say that it still brought identity to the game, and stations like Liberty Rock had a great impact on the experience. West Coast Classics threw us back into some of the most iconic tracks of 90s hip-hop. Gin and Juice, Mind Playing Tricks on Me, The Next Episode, and many others. All this overlaid by DJ Pooh, infamously known for co-producing San Andreas, featuring as Red from Friday, and even producing Tupac's All Eyes on Me. The homage that this channel pays to the West Coast is unbelievable. It also serves as a great gateway into classic West Coast hip-hop. We were brought back with the infamous Radio Los Santos from San Andreas, this time hosted by Big Boy, well known from Power 106 and KRRL, playing Kendrick Lamar, The Game, YG, and ASAP Rocky to name a few. The idea of in-house made tracks came back but with big artists. With the help of The Alchemist, Oh No, and Tangerine Dream in collaboration with Woody Jackson, to create the first use of an original score within the game. Volume 1 is especially interesting, as it has 18 tracks with various artists such as ASAP Rocky and Tyler the Creator, with songs solely produced for the game. Most of the lyricism also plays along with the various traits within the game. Not to mention, Tyler the Creator also made various NPC dialogue features throughout the game. Hey. You like potato salad? Cause I like potato salad, nigga. True, true. Rockstar wanted to achieve that authentic California feel more than ever within this game. Non-stop pop was essential to the team because the first time you get out of a plane in LA, you hear the radio and the pop just seeps out. They wanted that. It connects you to the real world. There was much greater discernment about the music in this game versus the fourth. I've said this multiple times through this video, but the developers further stated, Music reflects the environment in which the game is set, which is why they initially wanted to license over 900 tracks for the radio, but they refined the number to 241. The music supervisor Ian Pavlovich felt like he needed to strike a balance between the radio and the score of the game. They cited a scenario where players would drive to a mission objective while listening to the radio, with the score taking over once the players left the vehicle, and proceeded to the mission's next stage. With Michael, Trevor, and Franklin coming from totally different worlds, the game did a great job at executing this. Today there are 538 songs within the game's radio stations. Even Frank Ocean created his own radio called Blonded Radio, featuring a curation of some of his favorite tracks and a few of his own. The same goes with rapper and producer Flying Lotus, and his original work being composed for the Flylo FM station that he hosts. But above all is how much music this game has really put me onto. I could spend hours going through the 22 radio stations and many more within the previous games. But hell, I'd never know the lyrics to Willie Nelson's Whiskey River or C.W. McCall's Convoy if I weren't to steal some old man's car on the countryside in the game. Grand Theft Auto made me learn to love many more artists and genres that would have been out of my comfort zone. 
It's put me onto artists that I've listened to years after playing some of these games. It undoubtedly influenced my music taste over the last decade, and I'm sure the next game will influence me for many years to come. Now I want to hear from you guys. What is your favorite channel from the Grants of Auto series and why? Like always, I wanted to get back to you guys. A random comment that answers a question, likes this video, and is subscribed will win a copy of the GTA Trilogy on Xbox, PS5, or PC. The giveaway ends two weeks after posting this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time guys.